dear friends, you are just in time for CA Bread Connect. This is going to be our first episode in the new year. We are really excited that by God's grace, you made it into the new year. It is my pleasure, therefore, to invite you to walk with CA for the rest of the year. You can book a session with us every Thursday from 1.15 p.m. to 2 p.m. We will really be excited to know that you are following us. And therefore today, to start us off, I want to bring the worship tip to guide us through the first session. Just before I do that, allow me to pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I give you praise. I give you glory. Many thanks, Lord, for bringing us into the new year. And therefore, Lord, we want to glorify you, Lord, in this new year, even through these programs. And therefore, Lord, we want to bless you, Lord, for this time, even as the worship team is taking at this time, Lord, to guide us, Lord, through the first session. We want to pray, Lord, that you're going to guide them. We thank you, Lord, for our online participants, Lord, wherever they are, we want to pray a blessing over them. And Lord, for the next session of this program, we want to pray that Lord will take the glory even as you guide us through. We give you praise, glory and honor, for we pray by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on somebody, whatever you are, whatever you're watching, just give God a shout of praise. And this day we are praising God to the mark of our holy calling. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I press, I 
bless your name, God, we bless your name, yeah. We bless your name. Come on, somebody, just wherever you are, you can just worship together with us. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory, God. You deserve all the praise. Jesus, you are the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, God. We bless your name, God, yeah. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Never changes. Oh. Jesus is the same yesterday. Forever, it never changes. Oh, how we love your name. We love you, Lord. That's why we praise you. Yeah. Oh, how we love your name. We love you, Lord. That's why we. God, your word, come on, sing it. Living under shall pass away. And Lord, your word remains forever. Sing, oh, we love you. Oh, oh hey. how we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. That's why we pray. That's why we pray.
someone up in your mouth and wash. We love you, Lord. Now there's nobody like you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory.
Thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. Indeed, we love you. And we're expressing our love, Lord, through singing praises to you. We're expressing our love, Lord, to you through lifting you, Lord, through songs, Lord. We bless you and honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, many thanks, worship team, for guiding us through that powerful session of blessing the Lord through songs. The Lord bless you for utilizing your talents and ability to serve God's purposes. And for you, our online viewers, we are really excited that you're still following CA Bread from wherever you are. Somebody said that it is great to move forward. It's great to look forward. But he said again, it is great to look upward, to trust God to move forward. And therefore, we are trusting God that uh, this time around, even as we look upward to God, we will get direction to move in His will and in His purposes. We just want to bless Him. Today, we are really excited that uh, we want to look backward. One way of looking forward and trusting God for great things is by looking backward just to establish how far God has brought you. We are really excited that today we'll be doing a recap of how far God has brought us. And therefore, we just want to welcome you to sit back and celebrate with us. When we started these programs last year, it never occurred to us that at this point in time we would be standing here still moving on strong under God's anointing. We started and we mentioned that we were moving with an acronym, BREAD, where B stands for bridges in life, R stands for realities in life, E stands for evangelism, A stands for apologetics, and D stands for discipleship. So far, we have covered bridges, we have covered realities of life, and by the end of December, we were looking at evangelism. Most welcome our online viewers. We are excited again that you are following us from wherever you are. Uh, we are looking at a milestone today as Bread Connect because today we are unveiling another chapter in Bread Connect. We are today introducing uh, the, second acron uh, the second letter in our acronym, Bread. As we had mentioned uh, earlier, Bread stands for bridges, where uh, B stands for bridges, R stands for realities in life, E stands for evangelism, A stands for apologetics, and D stands for discipleship. And therefore today, we are very privileged to introduce the letter R that stands for realities in life. And therefore to take us through this session today, we are looking at uh, seasons of life as, as a reality in life. Pastor Sarah, what are the common views that uh, one can think about when season is mentioned? You know, people out there have a way of looking at season. What are some common ones that you can mention? Thank you, Philip. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the ways in which people view seasons is, like I've already mentioned, is um, that they order certain activities about people's lives. For example, when we have rainy season, mm. there are certain things that are expected that people will do during the rainy seasons. Mm. Then there are the sunny seasons, like we have said, and that comes particularly here in Kenya and in Africa, where we don't have the extremes of yes. snow and what have you. Mm. The, we, we, you know, like I, if I push it back, I would remember, uh, for example, among the Kikuyus, they have, they divide the year into times of plenty lanes mm. and times of short lanes, so yes. heavy lanes and short lanes. Mm. 
and activities uh, of life are ordered along those kind of seasons, yes. then what do we do in this season or the other? Mm. And I think it is very important that we are considering the question of seasons because yes. there are many times that, uh, as, as, as Pastor Judy has said, mm. um, that life, just like the climatic seasons, mm. People's lives mm. are also ordered, uh, you know, the, it, it happens in mm. different seasons. Mm. You are in one season or the other. Yes. Uh, it's very important to consider this because in the absence of considering what season I am in today, mm. it's most likely that you will not make right decisions that you should be making today Absolutely. that prepares you for the next season. And that's why we are discussing this as a reality of life. Mm. That basically we need to be aware. When I am in this place, do I understand where I am? Mm. Or where we are as a community? And... Do, am I looking forward to what is coming? And are there certain preparations that are expected of me to make yes. uh, for the next season? Mm. And we are saying that the, the, you will be more successful in going through the seasons of life mm. if you can be able to understand where you are and where you are going. Yes. So, yeah, and most of the uh, people view life in, in, in that way, it, that there is where I am today and preparing for tomorrow. Mm. If I'm hearing you, you're saying that it's important for people to align themselves with the season. Is it possible that if you don't align yourself with the season, you might find yourself in the wrong place? Let me just give you an example. Uh, I planted maize in the wrong season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was in 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. I thought that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, mine was uh, in, a, in, in a swampy area and I thought that Maize could do. So I planted maize in the wrong season. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened? I prepared maize for birds. Because I was the only one in that area with the maize, so all the birds moved to my farm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any harvest. Despite the fact that the maize had performed, mm -hmm. I didn't have any harvest. And just so in line with that, I'm just posing this to you, that when you go against season, you stand a chance to suffer the consequences of the season, right? Most likely, yes. But I, I yes. think I, for me, I would say that, uh, mm. number one, it wasn't a long season for you. Yes. Because you understood the land which you were planting yes. on. Mm. What you did not consider is everything else that goes mm. with your planting at that particular time. Maybe yes. you would have put some mitigation factors yes. concerning the birds and you would have considered what else can I do. Mm. And this is where we are saying prepare. Yeah, prepare. prepare means understand the different dimensions mm. that will come. For example, when we talk about um, today, when we are talking about business farming, mm. you don't have to wait for the rainy season mm. for you to plant a certain crop. Yes. We are saying that as long as you prepare well, mm. you can even grow crops that usually don't grow during this, the, the, the sunny season, mm. as long as you prepare well. That mm. would include maybe digging water pans and uh, making sure that you have what it takes for the crop to grow mm. in a different season. Wow. But what you're saying is understand and then prepare. Every th time you think about stages of life, there are things that comes into your mind. Mm. I, I, I was just contemplating about the 12 of years, mm. the 12 of month, mm. and many other things. Yes. And, and I realize that in stages of life, mm. there are many things that a person has to look at. Yes. I'll just mention a few, yes. just to build on what we're going to talk about, mm. because every stage of life, mm is equally important in life. Absolutely. And any time you think about the stages of life, mm. you're asking yourself about the potential. Mm. You're asking about yourself about the hope. Yes. About the, 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 the vitality that comes out of that. Yes. The enterprise that comes out of that. Yes. And, and uh, when we talk about the stages of life, I know mm. we'll zero around the three main stages. Yes. That is the children, the youth, and the adult. Oh, really? But basically, it is a long thing. Exactly. But we want to zero around the three levels of childhood, yes. youthful stage, mm. and then the adulthood. Absolutely. And then see what God will speak to us. Yes. Yeah. Now, even as you talk about stages of life, we are talking about the really life of an individual growing from a childhood into an adulthood. Yeah. That's right? That's true. Now, uh, is there a direct coloration 
between these three stages? Very, very true. There's a, there's, there's a, a very direct correlation yes. in these three. Mm. Because there's no way you can divorce one stage from another. Yes. There's a way they are intertwined. Mm. They, 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 they build upon each other. Yes. Because when you talk of a child, mm. a child cannot exist without a parent. Yes. And when you talk of a parent, a parent also needs the child for certain things. Yes. And that's why you'll see that these stages of life mm. are equal yes. all over. Our pastor's just established something here that uh, the word of God can guide us through uh, making the right choices. Now, when faced with predicaments yeah, of our choices, is it right to blame them on God? Um, just allow me before I, 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 I answer that yes. to just support what Pastor said. Mm. Uh, our choices, mm. the choices we make yeah. Uh, whether they're good or bad yes. are determined by really our values yes the our the underlying values mm. that we have and and um when you read in someone mm. it says blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked yes no stands in the way of sinners mm. no sits in the seat of scoffers yes but his delight is in the law of the lord and mm. on his law, he meditates day and night. Yes. You see, this a person mm. that is guided by God. Yes. The choices they make are different from people who are who are not guided by God. So yes. To just support what uh, Pastor said, mm. it is very important. Uh, our values, which kingdom we belong to. Yes. Yes. That wow. determines what wow. choices we make. Yes whether they are going to be bad mm. or, or, or good. Yes. Yes. So yes. should you blame anybody? Mm. Uh, uh, your question was um, the when consequences. Say, yeah, when, when you face the consequences with, yeah. of especially wrong choices. Yes. Should you blame anybody mm. for it? Mm. Um, I, uh, I really think it depends. Mm. Sometimes, um, for because you f of lack of training, mm. you can find people making wrong choices yes. because of lack of they w they are not informed, mm. well informed. Mm. And uh, for example, uh, if you're a young person, mm. you depend on parents. Yes, you depend on teachers. Mm. You depend on your 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 spiritual parents yes. to guide you mm. and so when when a young person makes the wrong choice mm. sometimes it makes a lot of sense if they blame those mm. in authority in their lives mm. uh, because they would say why didn't you tell me this mm. was mm. Uh, wrong mm. but then if you've had the opportunity yes to 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 know what is wrong and what is right mm. and you intentionally choose to, to go the wrong way you have no one to, wow, wow. to blame you realize that the sheep was lost because of its stupidity yes if you look at that scripture mm. very well mm. and if you look at the issue of the lost coin mm. you realize that the lost coin was lost because of the carelessness of others absolutely and that's the point that we want to take because I'm you're here. asking me, can we blame I'm this you. team or not? I'm hearing you. And, and if you look at yes. the, the lost son, mm. the lost son was lost because of his own willfulness. Yes. It's something he decided mm. and said, I want to ask my father to give me what belongs to me. Mm. So with that one, he can't blame anybody. Mm. It was a willful kind of a, a step that he took. Mm. But for this second issue of the coin, mm. whereby... The coin was lost because of the carelessness of others. Yes. That means there's a, there's a point somehow you can blame some other people. Yes. With your problem. Mm. Because we have different worldviews. Yes. And uh, people view things differently. Mm. And uh, 
depending with your background, yes. there are things that can happen to you mm. and you find you are influenced by the environment you are in. Mm. So the carelessness of other people can also can influence also. you. Absolutely. And therefore today we are talking about spiritual and physical realm. I want to read the scripture just briefly before I answer that question. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24 verses 14, mm. and, the, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, yes. and then the end shall come. Mm. I want to begin by saying that we all live in a natural kingdom, yes. and that is the world. Mm. And in this natural kingdom, we also have the spiritual world. Yes. Where we have the spiritual world mm. and the natural world. Yes. And these two spiritual kingdoms, you'll find every person living in the world yes. reside in one of either. Yes. Either you reside in, this, in the kingdom of God mm. or the kingdom of the devil. Yes. And as you're asking, do we have three levels of existing. existing. Yes. Well, I want to answer it differently. Mm. That uh, as we look at the natural mm. and the spiritual, yes. those are the two levels that we have. Yes. And the two levels we have, the natural basically talks of what we can see, what we can touch, what we can hear. Basically, we are talking about the body. Mm, the visible. The visible part. But the yes. spiritual kingdom mm. refers to the soul Mm. And the spirit. Yes. No wonder we say man is composed of the body, the soul, yes. and the spirit. Mm. Man exists in these two worlds. Mm. The natural world mm. and the spiritual world. Yes. And knowing this, we will know that we all have a natural body yes. which lives in a spiritual a spirit that lives in a natural body. A natural body that, that lives, lives in a natural world. Oh, oh yeah. Very, yeah. very important. Awesome, awesome, it's important awesome. to understand that. Great. And the spiritual being yes. with an internal soul and mm. spirit. Mm. And if we have this understanding, it yes. becomes very clear when we talk about the spiritual world and the yes. natural world. Yes. So to answer our viewers, mm. we exist in the two worlds. Yes. The two kingdoms. Yes. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. Yes. And we have the body, yes. the soul, mm. and the spirit. Yes. The soul and the spirit is eternal. Mm. The body is mm. temporal. Wow. Yes. Philip, the Bible says in the book of Colossians mm. that when God saved us, mm. he saved us from the kingdom of darkness yes. and brought us into the kingdom of his son, which yes. is the kingdom of right. Yes. It also tells us that uh, in Peter, Peter actually writes when he writes in um, First Peter chapter 2, mm. and he says that we are to declare the praises of him yes. who have called us out of darkness mm. uh, into his marvelous light. Yes. So this, this kingdom, the kingdom of God mm. and the kingdom of Satan, yes. let me say so, yes. all the kingdom of right and the kingdom of darkness, mm are both a spiritual kingdom yes. and manifested mm. here on earth. Yes. So that it's spiritual, mm. but manifested in the, physical. in the physical. In the physical is where we operate in the five senses. Yes. Uh, we operate uh, by touching, by seeing, mm. by hearing, by... That's what we call the physical, the, the senses that helps us to relate yes. on the physical realm. Exactly. But then the spirit mm. in whom the Bible says us that when God created man, mm. he breathed his breath on him mm. and man became a living being. Mm. You know, there is that aspect of the fact that then we became uh, created as spirit beings yes. because God is spirit, mm. the Bible says in John chapter 4, mm. and them that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. Okay. So the fact that we are spiritual being created in God's image with spirit mm. means that we relate in the spiritual realm, yes. but the fact that he also made the dust of the ground yes. and um, out of it he breathed the breath of life means that then we are able to relate yes. with the physical world. Profound. People around the world have values and knowledge that they hold dearly and they share 
among the societies. And uh, some of these are entrenched so deeply to a level where we can say that uh, they are actually altars. And uh, as we are talking about altars in this program, I just want you to help us understand what altars are from where you are. Thank you so much, Elder Philip. Yeah, um, mm. across all humanity yes. and history, mm. uh, it's clear that people always would want to adhere mm. to a certain type of life or mm. a, a lifestyle. Mm. But above all, mm. people want power. Yes. People want power. Mm. And, uh, and altars actually are centers of power. Mm. These are centers of power. Mm. And uh, uh, and that power is actually seen by societies or people mm. as a place they go to yes. to get things influenced in their lives or mm. in their favor. Mm. So when they want things to happen in uh, in their favor, they would want to 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 to, to get some power or yes. to get some some source of influence mm. and and many a times people would now go to a place mm. uh, and maybe they have an altar they mm. go and pray mm. and uh, so that they may they they they, they may actually uh, let me say so that they may trigger off mm. uh, an, another extra force yes. in, in their lives. Mm. And mostly that's a spiritual uh, force. Mm. Be, uh, that's more than the physical force mm. which we know. Yes. So uh, an altar actually, mm. and when we go through the Bible and in our societies, mm. these have been centers of worship. Yes. These have been centers of worship. Mm. But let me say this uh, about altars. Yes. Uh, let me say that an altar uh, have some things which are so common with them. Mm. One, there is a deity yes. that is associated to each and every other altar. Yes, there is uh, there is power. Mm. That's the second thing I would want to say that every altar has have such a char uh, such characteristics. Yes, uh, so there is a deity. Mm. There is an issue of power or, or influence. Wow. Uh, another thing is that each altar have laws. Yes, you know. That they are the, the, the things which are seen as sacred, which mm. people have to perform for mm. them to 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 be to appease wow. the, the, the the powers mm. that be and that influence that particular altar. So there are laws yes. uh, that govern each and every altar. Yes. Uh, another thing is that about an altar is that they they sacrifice. Wow. You know there is that aspect that you have to let go. You've got to sacrifice something yes. on an altar, mm. uh, just to trigger off mm. that uh, supernatural power wow. or force. Mm. Uh, another thing I would want to say is that there is devotion. Mm. You know you have to be devoted to it. So wow. every altar calls for devotion. Yes. Uh, so uh, so altars have been there. Mm. All across humanity, mm. and uh, as I've said, there is a deity associated to it, mm. and the other things that I've said. Wow! But let me just also stretch it a little bit further. Yes, yes, yes. That today we may not be erecting um, the, the, the the altars as yes. we know mm. that as an idol on it, mm. but uh, uh, anything today, mm. anything today that we 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 that that we deem. Yes. To to think that this is our source of infl or of influence mm. or of power, that's mm. our idol. Wow. So it may be anything and all that. Like the African traditional society. Yes. We we know of altars. They had altars mm. and they raised altars and they were mainly on mountains, mm. under trees, yes. Uh in rivers. Mm. And because they realized that there was a power mm. that was more powerful than them. Yes. And, and, and especially in times of uh, calamities. Yes. That's when uh, they would consult. They mm. would want a power that can help them in times of, 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 um, of uh, earthquakes, for example, mm. when there were floods mm. or when there is famine. Mm. Or, or, or a pandemic like what we're going through. Yes. So they, they because they believed mm. there's a power that's above them. Mm. So altars were raised mm. for 
reasons like those. So yes. altars are as low, old as humanity. Wow. We we have the godly covenant, yes. and what we mean by godly covenants, mm. this is a covenant between human beings mm. and God, Jehovah Yahweh. Yes, that's the God of the heaven. Mm. That's the God. Uh, that's the God of the Bible. Yes. Uh, so we call that one godly covenants, mm. and that's, for example, what Pastor Judy has just talked about: yes. the covenant between him mm. and the children and, and Abraham. Mm. There is also the covenant between God mm. and, and the children of Israel yes. uh, on Mount Sinai. Mm. Uh, that's where we have the Ten Commandments yes. coming in. Mm. So there was a covenant there. But mm. also in the New Testament, mm. we have the covenant uh, uh, between Jesus and the entire and the entire humanity. Mm. Uh, that is the New Covenant. Mm. And where Jesus himself is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yes. So uh, that's the godly covenant. Mm. But we have the other aspect of uh, covenant which we call the ungodly covenant. Yes. These are covenants which uh, are made between humans mm. and specifically with the devil mm. or with demons. Mm. So that is what we call the ungodly covenants. Mm. As Pastor Kiprop has already alluded, yes. there are you can tell mm. uh, whether the covenant is godly or mm. ungodly yes. by how it is done. Mm. Uh, many, many of, of, of the covenants that are ungodly, mm. which are mainly demonic, mm. involve things that uh, uh, go against godly values. Mm. For example, sexual immorality. Yes. The other one is is of or, uh, like human sacrifice. Yes. For example, where children are sacrificed, mm. that's ungodly, mm. and and um, this signify uh, they are very significant the items that are used. Mm. So so for example, uh, behind any ungodly covenant mm. is is. Um, is disobedience mm. against God. Mm. It's um, uh, what, what I want to use a stronger word, not mm. just uh, disobedience. Mm. It's um, you know going going against God in mm. a way that you you tell God to His face mm. that you against Him, mm. and the devil will use things yes. like sexual immorality. And so mm. so it speaks mm. about the foundation. Of yes. that covenant, yes. Okay, yes. That 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 it is betrayal against God. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, that you you telling God I'm against you. Yes. Let me come to you, senior pastor. What comes to mind when you are talking about covenantal blessings? What comes to your mind? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elder Philip. Mm. And uh, just building on what Pastor Patrick has has already talked about. Yes. When I think of covenantal blessing, mm. I think of covenantal responsibilities. Wow. This, is, this refers to what a man mm. is supposed to do mm. so that he can effect the covenant. Mm. When we talk about covenantal blessings, yes. these are blessings that come yes. out of your obedience to that covenant. Mm. Because as from the definition of what a covenant is, yes. Yes. a covenant is an agreement. Yes between two or more people yes. who are promising mm. to do something or mm. certain things yes. together. Yes. So when we talk about covenantal blessing, mm. we are talking about those blessings that comes because mm. of your obedience to the covenant. Wow. Because if two people have agreed on something mm. and they have promised that they will leave us by the promise they have made, yes. then automatically mm. blessings will follow because you are leaving us by what you have agreed upon. Absolutely. Which is very, very critical. Absolutely. Yes. Now, when you talk about covenantal curses, mm. these are curses that comes out mm. of disobedience yes. to the agreement that two people made. Yes. Because it is, it is, it is Solomon who says in Proverbs 26, yes. in verses number 2, mm. Just allow me to read there. Yes, the Bible says, like a fleeting sparrow, mm. like a flying swallow, mm. so a curse without cause mm. shall not alight. Yes. So anytime there's a curse, mm. there's a cause. Yes. Why that curse 
has alighted. Whoa. It's very, very important to know that. Yes. And, and I want to say this with all humility mm. to our viewers mm. that curse is real. Mm. Curse is real. Curse is real. Mm. We can't run away from that. Yes. Curses mm. are forces that affect mm. the physical mm. in one way or another one. Yes. And, and, and I want to say this, that mm. our access to yes. the details of the scripture mm. will determine how much we accomplish in life. Yes. Mm. Because if we don't understand the scripture well, mm. we'll still be under the covenantal curse. Yes. Because the Bible says in John 8.32, Yes. You will know the word, mm. and the word will set you free. Mm. So our freedom comes from our access yes. to the detail of the scripture yes. and understanding what is the mind of God. Yes. Because the moment you understand the mind of God, mm. you begin operating as per the word of God. Yes. And I'm saying this because in the book of Isaiah, yes. Isaiah says there are people who are in prison, mm. there are people who are in the halls, Mm. because of not understanding yes. their, their, their destiny. Mm. Many destiny today are spoiled. Mm. Many destiny are, don't have direction because yes. people are under a curse. So we yes. talk about covenantal curse. Mm. These are curses that come out of disobedience. Yes. Disobedience to the word of God. I would like to, to just remind us mm. that covenants have the terms and conditions. Yes. And if you go against what you agreed mm. you know as partners in a covenant mm. curses will come up against you and yes. blessings if you go by yes. you 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 are faithful mm. then you will experience blessings yes and um yes does does god use satan the bible says the devil is his servant mm. so we see it in the book of job mm. where god uses uh, allows satan to do things mm. to to in order to test mm. job mm. so um yes he's he's he, he can, can be used use, by god yes to yes pass a to, curse and judgment to bring on judgment people. yeah yes. on on a people yes yes and he can also use people to bring judgment how do you live as a resident of the kingdom mm. of god in a fallen world yes one is that there is need to recognize mm. number one mm. that you actually represent the kingdom of god yes. wherever you go Mm. Whether you are in your, whether it is in your family, mm. whether it is in your workplace, yes. whatever office you enter, mm. you enter as a resident of the kingdom of God, mm. and therefore you take there the aspirations, the values, whatever it is that pertains to the kingdom of God, you take it there where you are. Wow! But the second one is a recognition mm. that you will find opposition from the kingdom of darkness yes you just need to be aware yes. that there are certain things you will find there that don't go with the word of god mm. and you need to take your stand against them mm. sometimes that will cause persecution maybe mm. in your workplace mm. everybody else wants to be bribed in order to give you a certain certificate i mm. remember one time somebody sharing uh, from the office where they operated, they do give people certificates to show that they have the year of viva injection, that you have already have it when you are going to travel to another country. Yes. And somebody says, you can go to that office without having that injection hmm. because it costs money yes. and you get your certificate and go. But what do you do together to bribe? And this person is yes. there. And there are people who are saying, Niandikie tu, Niandikie tu. Yes. And this person says, I can't. You just have to be jabbed. Wow. Go and get the jab. Yes. Then once you have the jab, I give you the certificate. Yes. And that almost cost her her job. Wow. Why? It's the opposition from the other kingdom. Yes. Today is exceptional because we are starting on the next letter, which is E, representing evangelism. Pastor Kiprop, when you're talking about evangelism, what comes to your mind? Well, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, just as you've said, it's a milestone today, mm. Mm. and uh, we're beginning a new uh, a new discussion yes. topic, mm. and that's evangelism. Yes, and uh, it's a milestone not only because it's something happening in the sea, yes, but because I think evangelism. 
yes. is a true milestone in the kingdom of God. Absolutely. Uh, mm. So when we think of evangelism, yes. we are thinking about uh, the death and mm. the resurrection of Christ. Yes. And most importantly, mm. uh, after his resurrection, mm. he tells the disciples to go and, and preach the gospel. Yes. He sends them out to go and preach the gospel. Yes. So that comes into my mind. But mm. uh, furthermore is that uh, evangelism mm. uh, it is actually a word that comes from Greek, mm. which means euangelion. Yes. And euangelion actually means good news in English. Mm. So when we talk of evangelism, we are actually talking about good news. Yes. We are talking about good news. And uh, uh, so that takes us now to uh, what is the good news? Yes. And the good news is actually about the death mm. and the resurrection of Christ. Yes. And above all, yes. why he died is that he may reconcile us back to God. Mm. Mm. One of the things that we must understand is that it is God who mm. has declared what sin is and what is going to be the mm. judgment or the result of that sin. Mm. And one is disobedience to the spoken word of God or the moral law of God, that which God has given. Mm. So sin, number one, when we look at this, we see that number one, sin is an action that is done uh, in liberation or in contradiction to what God desires. Yes. But beyond the action is the attitude. Mm. Sin is an attitude that looks at God as not holy and good as he is. We see very well the Bible tells us that when Satan deceives Eve, she develops an attitude when Satan says that you will be like God. She then looks at God as not good, being good enough to have desired good for her mm. Mm. in the human lease. And so she feels that then this, she develops an attitude that is not right before God. There are consequences. First, the first consequence is when we, the Bible says, Sin separates us from God. Mm. And when you're separated from God, mm. oh, oh, oh. Mm. there's a big problem there. Mm. Because life, we're supposed to live life for him. Mm. Actually, God created us for himself mm. and for his own glory. Yes. Now, you know, when, as I said, God created us for himself and yes. the only time we're complete and the only time our lives is our lives are going to be fulfilling mm. and purposeful is when we live our lives in God. Yes. You just mentioned something about God loving the world. I want you to help us understand there because people also love the world. We love nature, we love we beauty, you know, the world. Mm -hmm. What do you understand when you're talking about loving the world? <laughs> That's a very interesting one. Yes. God is love. Yes. And I want to emphasize this because mm. this is the core, the message of, our, of salvation. Because mm. there's no way you can speak about the message of salvation without the love of God. Yes. And this is very clear from the scripture. Yes. You read John 3.16. Mm. You read Ezekiel 33 verses 11. Yes. You read 2 Peter 3.9. You'll see God is so loving that God can be so patient with us mm. just to give us some time to rethink mm. and to refocus yes. on where we are. Yes. Because God gives us more time yes. to, to, to understand that he still loves us. Mm. You can decide to go very far from God, mm. but God will still be there waiting for you to, to come back to your senses. Yes. Because the moment you come back to your senses, the mm. love of God is still open yes. to us. So when we talk about the love of God, the agape love, mm. this is the love that is unconditional. Mm. You don't need to do anything to deserve the love of God. Yes. You only need to submit and be obedient to him. Mm. You don't need probably to be a good person mm. or, or to pay some amount of money for God to love you. Mm. As long as you open your heart yes. and you come back to your senses mm. and realize that where I am is not right, mm. then you'll begin 
understanding what the love of God is. Yes. You've just watched excerpts from our previous recording. We believe you have a testimony and you are bearing the same that indeed God has brought us a long way. We want to welcome you to follow us and if you want to watch the full episode, you can visit our YouTube uh, channel at Sitam Eldoret TV or on our Facebook page at Sitam Eldoret and you'll be able to interact with the full episodes of what you've just watched. The Lord bless you. And therefore, as I'd mentioned earlier, we've covered B, R, E. We are now moving to letter A, which represents apologetics. And later on, we'll be moving to letter D, that represents discipleship. And therefore, next week, we'll be starting on apologetics. We want to welcome you to work with us, even as our team of facilitators will be guiding us through this great topic. Until we meet again, the Lord bless you.